Good afternoon, this is Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. Today is Monday, the 9th of July, 2012. Hope everyone enjoyed uh, some extra time off last week. Um, let's take a look at these markets, and I also want to talk about the 50-day moving average in re relation to some individual stocks. Um, we'll talk about the market first, but stick around because there's some interesting ones there that I think you'll uh, want to take a look at. The S&P 500 was down slightly today. Um, it's pulled back here, and we do have an intermediate term pattern of higher highs and higher lows, so we'd really have to get back below 130 and a half to 130.80 to have bigger troubles but that's so far away that I don't think it's even really worth considering I think that uh, right now we want to look at uh, basically this area here we're at a little prior resistance at 134 uh, that should become support if we pull back a little further and then we have the 20 and 50 day moving average in that uh, area as well on the 10 minute time frame we can see you know that would also get us maybe down towards 133 and a half uh, kind of close this gap 130 to 133 and a half um, but we are right now on the intermediate term time frame with gap, uh, Friday's gap lower we are below this five-day moving average and the five-day moving average is slightly declining so we have to consider this as guilty till proven innocent now if we take a look at the average price since the market gapped higher uh, last week we can see that's right there with that five-day moving average as well making the 136 area something that we're gonna want to watch closely uh, and then you know from that gap lower we're basically around that area so we're in an important area where perhaps we'll just consolidate a little bit but uh, we are still semi constructive overall on the daily time frame intermediate term time frame kind of uh, neutral to turning lower and then on a short term time frame such as the one day and the two days since Friday's gap we're really just kind of trying to stabilize in here a little bit so very uncertain where this market goes one area well let's take a look at the Nasdaq first because because we can see the same thing and I was talking about this with subscribers in, uh, in the afternoon video 63 and a half is where we have that 10 20 and really the 50 day moving average as well so 63 to 63 and a half uh, this area is going to be an important level for the market to hold up above here um, if we can see that it continues to hold really probably 63 and a half then I think the Nasdaq will do okay the biggest area of concern in, in that department though is the action in the semiconductors these guys were down just a little bit more than 1% today and you can see that they were rejected in this prior band of support that we had uh, spoken about I've had these lines on this chart for the last several weeks and we found some resistance in there twice just under the 33 level and now we're coming back down to the you know what's been important support down near about thirty dollars and seventy five thirty dollars and eighty cents um, here we can see that you know this is an important area so these semiconductors are really telling us a whole lot of you know don't trust this action we've got a declining 50-day moving average which we were above for just a couple of days and now the markets back uh, below that so that tells us we generally want to be cautious 50-day moving average here kind of flattening out so on the Nasdaq and the Russell 2000 uh, flattening out as well and we can see we broke the downtrend line in the Russell uh, as well as what had been important resistance at about that 79 level so we've, if we can still see the Russell hold that 79 area we've got a rising 10-day moving average in there as well um, on the 30-minute time frame we've got a five-day moving average but it is showing the pattern of lower highs and lower lows which means caution yellow light here if we can get back above probably the 81 level then things will look better so there's just a ton of uncertainty in these markets here right now and people who are talking uh, confidently about what they think the direction will be uh, must be looking at something other than what's actually happening in the market because the market uh, is is represented on these uh, charts and technical analysis is telling us we've got a very mixed picture the financials um, you know they're down to some important moving averages on that daily time frame as well we've seen some important levels of support uh, in this area about 1440 and we just came back down from a test of what was prior resistance support just under that 15 level so uh, again it seems as though maybe we settle down a little bit we do have uh, 14 and uh, 14 dollars and 30 cents basically this is a trend level line from uh, the, the most recent lows and we've got this prior resistance so you know if that holds then we're at least neutral for the uh, for the near term uh, but with a lot with, with without much confidence basically
basically is the way you want to look at it. What I wanted to talk about was the 50-day moving average. A lot of people look at you know stocks and say they're down too much. Now we saw this with natural gas as well. Natural gas had been in a horrible downtrend for you know for quite a while here. We can go back um, you know and look at uh, even let's let's go back to. Uh, I just put 500 weeks on there. The red moving average is the 50-day moving average. We saw some uh, moves above it last year while the 50-day moving average was declining. And I've been saying all along, with a declining 50-day moving average, actually, this is Arch Cole. I don't know how that happened because that was one of the examples. But here with natural gas, UNG, we've seen a lot of rallies. Now we're seeing that 50-day moving average start to flatten out, which tells us maybe we're in for a little bit more neutral period. But we've still got a declining 150. 50 and a 200 day moving average saying that if they didn't scare you out in natural gas they were they were likely going to continue to wear you out in this and also in a stock like arch coal where we look at aci and we can see the same thing which is this 50 day moving average is still declining it's still declining here and you know a lot of people were excited about it. there was a great rally in here last week you know off of these lows though so you know you've got to be looking at it and saying what is the risk the risk is that when we're in a downtrend like this and a group gets hot and you see a lot of action on it it makes a bounce you can trade those bounces but look what happens when the dominant moving average for the intermediate term time frame started to we started to see lower highs and lower lows then we broke below the five-day moving average that's telling us here's a stage one accumulation stage two uptrend stage three distribution and here's a stage four decline now it's not a horrible decline so far in arch coal but there's no saying that this won't be the same thing that we saw in uh, in PCX, which is Patriot Coal, trading down at 58 cents right now. We saw, you know, with this 50-day moving average, there's been some great bounces and people get excited by them. But now there's, you know, bankruptcy risk in here. That's the same thing we saw with Penson. I was talking all last year about, you know, how, how horrible Penson looked and the direction of the moving averages. Crocs, you know, rallied just right up to that declining 50-day moving average. I saw a lot of excitement about the big moving Crocs. Well, the the declining 50-day moving average, it doesn't mean it's always going to halt right at the 50-day moving average, but here in, in the case of DEC, you know, it's been doing that. In the case of Fort, Fortinet, we saw a couple days above it. Don't trust these rallies. They are typically not going to hold. Look at Green Mountain Coffee Roasters, the, the declining 50-day moving average. You simply cannot trust them. The, you know, IBM found resistance at a declining 50-day moving average here the last few days. Uh, Riverbed has been one that people try to buy as it, as it bounces. And then, you know, I've been talking a lot about Zynga and how this stock's getting snow packed and it's guilty till proven innocent. Real close to uh, all-time lows here. Cena is another one. You know, it got above the 50-day moving average for a couple days. You can look at the um, uh, great story stocks like MCP, which is a uh, rare earth play. A lot, you know, some real sharp rallies here the last month. But these rallies quickly failed here uh, with that declining 50-day moving average. I will show you one exception to what I believe is the exception to the rule, which is HMSY. And, you know, this required a lot of news in an industry for it to turn back around. But this, you know, this declining 50-day moving average, you don't want to, that doesn't mean short right in there. You still have to look for evidence from the shorter term time frames. That's the concept of, you know, working down from larger time frames to shorter term time frames to get a feel for, okay, we're not going to trust this on the longer term time frame. So you're not going to, you know, a, a Stage four stock should be uh, considered a short sale candidate, um, and then you want to wait for the evidence on the intermediate and shorter term time frames to implement those trades. But if they don't give you a reason to implement, then there's you know you can watch them continue to go higher and say, "Wow, I shoulda, coulda, woulda done this." Those are banned rules in Alpha Trends chat room. But we uh, you know want to continue to just be aware of what are the most likely um, events on certain time frames, and then look at it and say, "Well." When the market tells us all of these mixed pictures, which is exactly the message of the market right now on various time frames, it means go slow, trade less share size. If you're going to trade these stocks and they're bouncing, you know, they then they're they're decent trades, but they should be considered trades only with smaller share size. Um, anyways, I hope that was helpful. Thanks for tuning in.